Welcome to Real to Real Outdoors, Captain's Roundtable. We are up here in Acme, Michigan, which is just outside Traverse City, uh, at the Bayview Inn, a wonderful host for today's episode. Uh, we got to give a shout out to our sponsors, Captain Chuck's uh, 2 in Ludington, and also Ludington Beverage. So let's meet these captains and get the show on the road. Captain Luke Springstead, uh, Traverse City, Michigan with True Blue Charters. Captain Brian Springstead, True Blue Charters, Traverse City, Michigan. All right. So once again, we're up here at the Bayview Inn. Thank them for being a great host for us. Uh, Bush Light for sponsoring this episode. And Captain Chucks, as always. Um, well, we're in East Bay. We're with one of the legends of East Bay. It's almost He's almost like a pirate up here, isn't he? So uh, Brian's been fishing East Bay since... Uh, since he started fishing, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, I've always enjoyed conversations with, with Brian and, and Luke both on lake trout fishing. Um, they have a tremendous, incredible lake trout fishery up here. Um, and they do all sorts of different methods. They do the uh, jigging up here. and uh, But primarily trolling is what we're here to talk about. So let's, uh, let's just kind of like give me your... your Going out, we're going to run a lake trout spread on a charter or just, you know, out fishing for the day. What are your rods and how, how, how do you set it all up? All right. So we have a couple different seasons. Sure. Yeah. We should definitely probably specify that. Right. So, I mean, we start in the spring and we're looking for the warmest water we can find, which is going to be hopefully approaching 40 degrees, you know. And that's going to be up close to the shallows in the bank. Um, and uh, we're going to set out one colors, two colors. Th I guess think of it, if you're a brown trout or a steelhead fisherman in the southern part of the lake, think of this our lake trout fishery like that type of fishery. Um, you're going to target 20, 30, 40, 50 feet of water. You're going to cover that water column with one colors, two colors, three colors, four colors, slide divers. Um, you'll run riggers um, way back. Um, and we're trolling slow because the water's cold. And lake trout, they're not super speedy fish. They can be, but typically in the spring, we're running 1.8, 1.6, 1.8, 2. Um, so we like lighter spoons. So we're using, uh, you know, the lightest spoons we can find. And any steelhead color you like, the oranges work great in that shallow water for the lake trout. If you've got something that looks like a goby in the goldish patterns, browns, dots, it's going to work. Um, so that's so starting out in the spring, um, shallow water. I'm gonna I'm gonna go like a six rod spread. It's gonna be a one color, a three color, a slide diver, slide diver, and then out the other side. And I might go as deep as a five color. Um, I'm going to start with uh, orange and gold on the outside, stinger typically, something lighter. Um, I run a lot of Evil Eye lights. Um, uh, I love the little uh, mini streaks still, yeah. little thumpers, stuff like that. I bend them up, cup them up, get, get an action going. Um, you know, that's the spring. Um, the majority of our fishery that, you know, Luke's doing through um, June, July, August, Early September is deeper. Um, how deep what was the deepest you fished this year? Uh, after I fished down with bottom, <laughs> I went and picked one off in 220 feet. So 220 feet on bottom. Um, you know he's running 21 pound cow uh, cannonballs. Um, but I'm going to start every day with um, hammerhead cowbells on the out downs um, with a whirly gig, spinning glow. Um, something white chartreuse, something blue. I mean, there's just a few colors that the trout are going to go with. They're, you know, some days they want blue, and I would say about 10% of the time, 90% um, of the time they want something white chartreuse. Mm -hmm. um, you know, something in that range. They like contrast. So if it's a white chartreuse, it's got to be ladder backed or, you know, a half and half type spinning glow or something like that. And then put glow on all of that. Yeah. You know, um, so I'm going to start with a spinning glow, hammerhead bells on this side, hammerhead bells on the other side, maybe with a flatfish. 
Um, I still, he doesn't, but I still run a lot of spoons behind my bells. Um, really? Oh, God, yes. Uh, flutter spoons, spring spoons, sugar spoons, um, the old Andy Reeker spoons. He's got my box of painted up Andy Reekers. Those go behind bells. Kind of break glass in case of emergency. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Tournaments and really slow days. <laughs> yeah. Really slow days, the Reekers come out. Yeah. Um, but those are going to catch bigger fish. Um, those are also going to catch pressured fish. Because if you think about our bay or any body of water you fish that has a lot of traffic going through it, everybody's fishing the hammerhead cowbells. Everybody's fishing um, spinning glows, whirly gigs, stuff like that. So you're going past these fish. I want to come through certainly with a bait like that, but I also want to have something that's a little different. Sure. And it can't just be different. It has to be different but good. Yeah. Yep. You know, you can't just put some goofy thing down and go, well, it's different. Well, no, it's got to be different, but good. It's got to have good cupped action. It's got to, it's got to flutter, and um, it's, it's that fish hasn't seen that bait. Sure, you know that fish may not that that bait. Some of the baits I'm fishing haven't been seen out here in 30, 40 years. Some days I just go, okay, I got it. What about it? What haven't I run? These fish have seen everything. I run a ton of body baits behind cowbells, flatfish, quick fish, stuff like that. Yeah, thin fins. Just put something. Just it, if, if we you never can, uh, we never really venture to. I, I remember never when had to. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, I mean, we have our if we touch the bottom with anything, it's dirty, you know. So we're always like the days of fishing peanuts and stuff. But the the it always surprised me like the body baits behind cowbells. Do you ever do it behind any kind of rotator? That can you no. get an action? I mean. There are some guys that do it with spoons. I know SS yeah. spoons behind spin doctors. Well, we're yeah. we're still big on, um, at least I am, and he'll run it to some extent. Did you do well on Dodgers this year? You had your days? Uh, no, I didn't do good on Dodgers this year. Well, what, what, last year I what was your did your speed change between last year and this year? No, do you think it's similar? I don't know what it was. I. Mess with my, well, uh, now I'm going to tell you why he didn't do good. I asked him that because I'm going to tell you why he didn't do good on Dodgers this year. I had six Dodgers that were killers. Six Dodgers that you could put in the water. If you had all six out at once, you might have six fish on. These were that good. These were Emphasis tuned. They were beautiful. He broke every one of them off. <laughs> every one of those Dodgers is gone. I haven't, so, I haven't had those Dodgers it's, it's in always, four years. It's always interesting when you... Uh, well, who was the, the radio host, the rest of the story? Oh, yeah. Remember that? Paul, Paul Harvey. Harvey. Paul Harvey, the rest of the story. This is like the the uh, Luke's rest of the story. Yeah. I didn't hear about the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the loss of great tackle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I cried. <laughs> <laughs> I broke one off today. I'm like, I still got five. Yeah, I broke one off today. I only got four. <laughs> I have some good ones now. Uh, I just didn't need to really do uh, Dodgers this year. Yeah. <clears throat> He's done a good job of going um, the spin doctor yep. route. He has a really good spin doctor program um, for trout that, you know, I would fish spin doctors for trout and do really good on them at times, sure. especially suspended afternoon trips. You know, when those fish, you know, they weren't necessarily, they'd come off the bottom a little bit in the afternoon and suspend over that deeper water, I would go out and target them. And I found spin doctors did a great job for me out there. Yeah. But typically I'm starting that trip. I got my cowbells. I've got my wire divers with dodgers on them or spin doctors. Luke's going to have spin doctors on them for sure. Um, and uh, I want to be, if I'm in 120 feet of water and I'm looking for fish, I'm seeing those fish tight to bottom, those cannonballs have to be touching bottom. Yep. You go hit, so you see the guys drop, I'll see the younger mates, they'll drop the ball to bottom, they'll pick it up three or four feet. Now, you're trolling, it's even getting farther up the water column as it's, as it's swaying back a little bit. So now you're five, six feet up bottom. I can't tell you how many days. You're not gonna get a fish. Yep. It ain't gonna happen. So I will go back, drop the ball to bottom, hit bottom, oh, fish. It's like, oh, yeah. 
What, what about the opposite, though, if it's hitting too hard? Yeah. You're it's weeded. A, you're weeded or yep. slimed. Um, and you'll, you'll run too far back behind the ball. So now that, that bait is, is sinking even farther. So it's, it's a 15-foot it's drop back, not much farther than that for cowbells for me, mm -hmm. um, if I'm fishing tight to bottom. Now, sure. if you're fishing in that early spring, we're running the cowbells way behind the ball, but we're fishing them suspended a little sure. bit. Um, but 15 feet or so, even tighter to the ball, and we run tethers. We run a yep. foot and a half to two foot yep. tethers so that when the ball's on the bottom, my tether's here. I'm with usually about 10 foot behind the ball. So the ball's stirring the mud up. The bait's not necessarily dragging in the bottom. Yep. So when I say the ball's hitting the bottom, I'm not saying the bait's dragging in the bottom. That bait, with that tether correctly adjusted, that bait is just in the, the, the kicked up dirt back there, but it's yep. not dragging. Also, when you're dragging your ball in the bottom, you've just cleaned a pathway. If you've ever seen it with a camera, a lot of it's that green silt. So that ball hits the bottom, it puffs it out, and you've created a trench, a clean trench. Yep. So now your bait has a little bit of a clean pathway to work in the dirt. But if you're not kicking that dirt up, you're not getting fish. Yeah, I, I, I think that, you know, when you make contact there, it, it's, it's a bit, you know, like a, a bait fish, like a sculpin taking off. You see the And you puff. get that poof. And yes. they're going to go see, and they're just keyed in on that. They see that puff of silt, and they're going to go see what that was. Right. Because that's something I'm going to eat. So you see a, a, a fisherman with a 100-foot lead behind the ball, and I'm going to go work bottom, and they're banging the ball on bottom. They're literally doing no good. Yeah. Because the fish is coming up to where the ball is, checking that noise, and your bait's way the heck out there. So if you're going to work bottom, suck your bait in a yep. little bit. You know, do yourself some good. And we even go to the, as far as when we initially set, every morning when we initially set our trout stuff out, we stagger. So one may have a 15-foot lead and one may have a 25-foot lead. There you go. Or whatever it is. And then we pay attention to which one's getting bit and we make the adjustment and then suddenly both are getting bit. Right. Yep. So and that's my, kind of that my key. My two sets of bells, one has the glow crush cup on the backside. One will have a prism cup on the backside. One um, spin and glow will have the glow wings. One will have the prism every, every time. Every day it's different. Mm -hmm. And they will tell you, I want the glow cup um, and then you can make your adjustments um, you can't get where you just put the glow cups down every day and go man I just I mean I'm not getting anything did you put the the you know no oh I didn't do that and this is why I call him every day <laughs> what are you doing why are you doing that he's like leave me alone old man <laughs> leave me alone so we you know it's it's interesting in all areas because there's there's always the you know the 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 new guys that are kind of carving their own path and then you usually have mates who are trying to figure out a lot of different information and then you have you know the the old timers not to say that you're an old timer but yep, I am so then you have the old timers who who maybe are a little set in their ways yes you know so you it's kind of neat to see the interaction between the three generations of fishermen and, and that can even be like the 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 charter guy that's running every day the guy that's fishing every weekend and the guy that's fishing six times a year there, there's information to be had from all of those every people one of those yes. and there's something that each one of those people is doing right that the other one's probably not doing yeah. and a lot of times you know it can be those the subtle things um always going back to those confident baits you know that you have um or or running something different than you used to do it or always that's not how it's done you kind of have that mentality a little bit and then you start seeing these baits perform in water that you wouldn't necessarily run them in and maybe a color down deeper than you think it would go or different water temperature or whatever it is well that's why i like what luke does he has all the stuff that i do in his bag of tricks 
He knows though this is what the old man would be doing. You know. I can fish like him if I want. Yeah, he can fish. He <laughs> can fish. Not with you. <laughs> he can fish like me. Um, but yet he's gone. And he's he's taken it farther. Yeah. You know he's 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 got so many baits that he he can tweak and tune and play with that I I shake my head and go man I never would fish that and he kills fish on it yeah okay so I, he's 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 done it <laughs> he's he's doing it his own way you know and doing really well with it um, and it's different than the way I did it yeah but he can still add a little bit of what I did. You know, on those slow days or a day, he's like, okay, I'll, you know, I'll do this. You know, he called me the, you know, three weeks ago. He's like, man, I'm just not getting anything. I said, well, put this, this down on an out down, put it down 65 feet. He said, well, that's not where, t- I just put it down 65 feet. Like five minutes later, I get a text. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, sometimes you just, he will, he will bring me back. I'll, I'll go down a rabbit hole. That's the craziest thing. You'll get on the boat and you will oh. see river rockers everywhere. And he'll go, what are you Racing doing? rigs. <laughs> yeah. Yards. And he's like, Why are, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I caught something on this. And then that took me to this. And then he's like, just stop. Just go. <laughs> he's like, tell me you weren't running that. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I, I find that I run a lot of the same things over and over and over. And I catch fish on them. And I'm not changing the baits as much as I'm changing maybe um, the location of the bait in the water column or the presentation of the bait being up from a diver to a core or something. Yeah. And I think you, Luke, so Luke talks to everyone. Um, he may have come across as shy in the video, but he's not shy at all. And Luke gathers little bits of information from everybody, and he stores it for his own use. He doesn't really <laughs> yeah. share it no, with he anyone. Share. He doesn't share it with me. That, like, you'll go, oh, well, what is that? Well, this is what they've been running over there, on there, and they've been really doing well on it. I'm like, how do you have all this information, you know? People but don't tell me stuff. There's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot to be said for for the network thing. And, you know, I know that we kind of hammer on the network deal, but even if it's not... You know, Luke and I share a lot of information from Ludington to Traverse City and Traverse City to Ludington. We're not fishing the same fish. We're not fishing the same body of water, really. Um, you, you know, and the water temperatures are probably very different. But a lot of times we're seeing a lot of the same things happening. You know, we're seeing um, maybe a, a transition from blue into into some green colors or... You know, a UV tape on something over, you know, glow wings on a on a spinning glow or something. So I think having people all over is 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 critical. Well, you know, when I was 18, 19, 20, and I was a young mate, and you know, Ludington would would get their kings much earlier than we certainly would here yep. in River City. Well, you know, we didn't have the internet, things like that, you know. So I would make a trip down to Ludington. Um, you know, getting towards that end of July, mid July type of time to get a kind of a little yeah. pre prequel to what I was going to be seeing. And they go, Oh, we got this squid, or we got back then it was a lot of Dodgers and squids. Yeah, yeah. We got this, and it'd be stuff I'd never seen before, some of the stuff. And I would get some of that, and then I would be ready and I'd bring it up here. So I would be a little bit ahead of the curve because of the work that the fishermen in Ludington did, you know, yeah. so that would give me a little bit ahead. So I was making scouting trips back then. I would go to Roger City. I would check Roger City out. And Roger City was a big um, silver streak yeah. Uh, yeah. spot. So I was always finding the hot. We would, when the pink alewife came out, dude, that was earth shattering. <laughs> you didn't have a pink alewife down. You weren't catching fish. And if you had a pink ale wife, it was like magic. You'd put it in the water for like two years. That thing was just on fire. But you had you couldn't get them around here. Yeah. She had to drive to go, and you, you know you weren't going on Amazon. You you yeah you didn't jump on Captain Chuck's no, website. No, you did not. And UPS brought it the next day. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's like this one. You know, I mean, it, it was work. The green jeans. That thing came out. It just took over. Yeah. Love same it. Uh, Kevin, Kevin's girlfriend. You know, that's another one. You Mixed guys, veggie. I, I, you guys and the Kevin's yeah. girlfriend. Blue dolphin. <laughs> I, I had just, uh, it's one of those baits that I'm just snake bit on. Yeah. 
Everybody has those where you guys will just be killing them on Kevin's girlfriend. I'll stick Kevin's girlfriend down. I always say I couldn't catch COVID in Wuhan on that bait. Exactly. You know, there's there's definitely some baits like that for me. I'll have it eight, just doesn't happen. eight out of ten rods go. The only two that didn't go will be Kevin's girl. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else it, went. It will have uh, eight or nine Kevin's girlfriends out and at the same time. Go. They all go. So, yep. Well, hey, thank you guys for, uh, you know, coming on and sharing some information about your beautiful area up here. Uh, if you're up in the Travers area, get a hold of these guys. Uh, they'd be happy to to show you the things they love up here. And the fishing is phenomenal and the views are phenomenal and the 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 eating and drinking and enjoying entertainment it's all really great up here so come up check it out um the bayview inn wonderful place here in acme if you're in the area make sure you stop by uh, great lunch i didn't come for dinner yet but i will be back for that i'm sure um Big shout out to uh, Bush Light for sponsoring this episode and also Captain Chuck. So any of these things that you heard us talk about, um, you know, we have a lot of that available at Captain Chuck. So check them out. If you're in the Ludington area, definitely stop into the store. Say hello. Great group of people there. Uh, thanks for tuning in this week. Hope you guys can get out and catch some fish before that ice starts to lock everything up. But hey, you can go out on the ice too once it's safe. So don't forget that. And there's some actually some phenomenal ice fishing up this way. Yes, there is. So if you're uh, looking for an adventure this winter, check out Northern Michigan. It's quite the place to be.